heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Mary, Jesus loved Mary, Martha and her sister, and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. And the disciples said to him, Rabbi, lately the Jews sought to kill you. And you're going again? And Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of the world. But if one walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. These things he said... And after that, he said to them, Our friend Lazarus sleeps. But I go that I may wake him up. And then his disciples said, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get well. However, Jesus spoke of the death but they thought he, that he was speaking and talking. Rest in sleep. And then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For I'm glad for your sakes that I was not there, that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. And here we see a beautiful story about a test between Jesus and his followers. You know, it's an easy thing to say, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. And so many times we say, I believe. But what do we really believe? Now that's a question that we need to ask ourselves. What is our belief? What do we believe? How much do we believe that Jesus can do anything? And so the sisters had given up, the disciples had given up, and it seemed to be a hopeless situation. And so many times, you know, in the hospital, you hear them say, well, you better call in the family. Get everybody together because they've just got a few more hours or they've got a few more days. And then they're going to leave this world. But we don't know what God's plan is, do we? We don't know. And so here they were. They were worried. They said, Lord, if you'd have come, if you'd have been here, if you'd have taken charge like you can, our brother wouldn't have died. 
And one woman that was there loved Jesus more than anyone else in the Bible. Jesus said of her, wherever the gospel is preached, they're going to tell her your great love. And that was the woman that had gone in before Jesus' crucifixion. That was a woman that was known to be a promiscuous woman. That was a woman that was known to be a woman of the streets. And his followers didn't even want her to come near Jesus. Because he said, they said, if he knew what kind of woman this was, you know, if he knew what kind of woman this was, and, and so many times today we're prone to get the attitude of his followers and his disciples and those who had been saved by the power of the gospel. I want you to get this. So many times we're too prone to judge or condemn someone else. And yet there is nothing that God can't do. Be it unto you according to your belief. What do you believe? And Paul wrote, you know, to the Corinthians, and he said, you talk about drunks, you talk about whoremongers, you talk about wild and woolly people, and he named all these sins. And he said, I want you to know that that's what you were, you know, so many times we forget, don't we? That it was the amazing grace of God that had the sweetest sound and it reached down and saved a wretch like me. That we weren't, we were lost, but by God's grace we were found. We were blind. But now we see. And so here's this same Mary, the one that washed Jesus' feet. She took enough perfume that they said it would take a year's wages to buy that perfume. But you see, when you really love the Lord, and you need to get this in your head, there's no price too great. No sacrifice too great. And you should never doubt his love for you. So this was one of Lazarus' sisters, a, a woman that was not a high-quality person in the eyes of the world. But in the eyes of God, he said, wherever the gospel's preached, wherever the gospel's preached, and you know, when he got in there and you study this carefully, Martha was probably kind of like me. She thought if she didn't do it, it wouldn't be done. And she was just a hurrying and scurrying and worrying and trying to make the biscuits and trying to cook the food and trying to take care of everything. And her sister was kneeling again at the feet of Jesus. And which was more important, to bake a pan of biscuits or to kneel at the feet of Jesus? Lazarus is not dead, he's asleep. And I'm the resurrection and I'm the life. 
We need to remember that about Jesus. I am the resurrection. I am the life. And he was teaching his disciples to follow him. He said, whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. (laughs) Do you believe this? There was these guys being so critical and and, uh, doubting and fearful and worrying. And, you know, he said, if you, if you believe in Christ, you, and you believe in me, you shall never die. Do you believe it, this? And she said to him, I believe. And she made that great confession, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God. That was one of the first times that that great confession had ever been made. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Later on, that confession was made by Philip and the eunuch on the road to Damascus. And the eunuch asked Philip, What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If you believe, you may. And the eunuch said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That's that's the secret sentence. That's the phrase that you need to hide in your heart. See, if you believe with all your heart, you may. With God, all things are possible. Nothing is impossible. If you trust in God's great word, nothing is impossible if you listen to what he says, open up this book of life, you see, and you'll find that there's nothing good enough for me because I believe in God, the Father. She said, yes, Lord, I believe. I believe you are the Christ. I believe you're the Son of God who has come into the world. And when she had said these things, she went her way and secretly called Mary, her sister, saying, the teacher is coming and calling for you. And as soon as she heard that, she rose quickly and came to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the town, but was in the place where Martha met him. The Jews were with them and her in the house, and they confronted and conformed and approached her when they saw that Mary rose so quickly, and they went out and followed her, saying, she is going to be going to the tomb, and she's going to weep there. Then when Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if You'd been here, my brother would not have died. Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her weeping, 
He groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And he said, where have you put him? Jesus cares. The greatest lie that Satan will ever tell you is that Jesus don't care. A lonely night with tears streaming down your eyes and a heart that's broken in two. You've been abandoned. You've been lied to. You've been cheated. Maybe you've lost things. Maybe you've uh, been betrayed by a friend. But Jesus cares. And when we cry, he takes that to heart. Don't you ever doubt, does Jesus care? Yes, he cares. Yes, he cares. And not only does he care, but he does something about it. That's the beautiful part. A lot of times I go to a death or I go to a catastrophe and, and uh, I care, but I can't do anything about it, you know? The other day a lady called me and wanted me to go get these little children off the street. And I wanted to go get these little children off the street. And I cared. But I knew if I did, I'd be in all kinds of trouble. With all the agencies and all the units that was around. And so... Even though I loved and cared, I couldn't go. And had I taken them, I would have had great sorrow. Sometimes you care and there's just nothing you can do about it. But when Jesus cares... There's something he can do about it. I go into the home of women that their husbands have beaten them. I go into homes where little children have been abused and misused. And I care. But so many times, I can't do anything about it because the mother don't want to change. And I can take her and take the kids and do all I can. I, I had a mother one time that, that her father had taken her away when she was about 10 years old and he had raped her for years. And had two children by his own daughter. I cared. You say, did you care? Yes, I cared. My heart was broken every time I looked at those little boys. And I got to do a little something about it. We got her in school and we got her some education and and she's doing well, but so many times they'll go back to the same place and repeat what's never worked. They call that insanity, don't they? When you keep repeating what has never worked, and you expect it to work this time. That's called insanity. And I see so much of that. So many people 
that you care and you want to help them and you want to reach out to them and you want to, to provide for them a better way. Jesus cared, but he could do something about it. He had more power than I have. He had more authority than I have. And God can do anything but fail. The only thing God can't do is fail. They said to Jesus, come and see. And Jesus wept. One of the shortest verses in the Bible. Jesus wept. Don't you think it hurts him when we embarrass him and we break his heart and we do things as his children that we shouldn't do. I've told you all often I've got two burdens in my life. It's my two older children and we've prayed about them and prayed about them and it's been a burden to me. And now my boys come home. And it's just like he's never been gone. He's just, you know, sweet and tender and loving like I knew he would be. But I'm going to tell you why he come home. Because many years I prayed to him. My Father, which art in heaven, Amen. hallowed be thy name. Oh, God, you're the one in charge. Amen. And I cared. I cared. Jesus cared and wept. He cried. He cries for you when you go out and act like a moron. And you're his child. When you go out and use blasphemous, filthy things to say to other people, Jesus cares. It breaks his heart. He knows what we're doing. He knows what we're saying. He knows where we're going. There's a recording angel that writes down what we do. Did you know that? Man, I tell you, I hope he burns them records before I get up there. <laughs> he cares. And we can fill his heart with laughter. Or we can call Jesus to weep. What does it do, you that have children? What does it do to you when your loved ones go astray? Tires your heart out. Tires your heart out. You can't help but care because you love. And Jesus cares because he loves you. 
He don't want you to be sad. He don't want you to be lonely. He don't want you to be sick. He don't want you to be dead. He wants you to be his child. And he wants you to be saved. Then Jesus said, See how then the Jews said, See how he loves him. See how he loves him. Oh, how he loves you and me. Oh, how he loves you and me. He gave his life on old Calvary. Oh, how he loves you and me. Let's quit breaking his heart. Let's quit embarrassing him. I think the devil blows a whistle when one of God's children does wrong. I think the devil blows a whistle and says, look there. That's how much they love you. That's your child. You ever have a neighbor that everything your child did wrong, they's the first to want to come and tell you? You ever have that? Huh? I have. I have. You know, they just couldn't wait to come and tell you. Or tell you, Daddy. My, I had one told my daddy on me. Man, I tell you, I had a time forgiving him. <laughs> I wanted to do more than forgive him, Roy, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, how he loves you and me. Let's quit hurting him. Let's believe that if we pray in faith, believing he can do it. Even to the raising of the dead, there's nothing my God can't do. Keep praying, keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. He's listening and He cares. He's listening and he cares. Let's stand.